Thank you for your time, Patrick. Yeah, so we, we will call to order. Yes, okay. we will call this meeting to order this November 29th um, meeting for an interview for our one of three candidates. Um, so we'll take a roll call for one of four candidates. Sorry. Um, thank you. Um, should we take a roll call? Sure. Michelle Kirkby here. Jessica Riley here. Leo Brennan here. Anna Mae O'Shea Brooke here. And Tim will show up when he shows up. He is in the house. I think he's okay. just on the meeting. So, um, all right. Hello, Patrick. How are you? Good. I'm doing good. Great. Thank you very much for um, coming today, for applying, um, especially as you've just moved into town in March. I think that's wonderful. So we're going to try to keep this within 15 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did send you the questions beforehand. Um, if we could stay around three minutes or so per question, sure. yep. and um, and then we'll end with you know a, a closing statement up to two minutes. Sure. I'm not going to have a timer, but okay. within that frame, Madam Chair, just for the recording, we want to make sure that uh, that we know that Tim Knight is in uh, the house. Just joined us. Okay, there you go. Super. Okay. All righty. Do you want to turn your speaker towards him so that sure okay sorry okay let me get as close to you so this is okay. like that because this, this is important you gotta turn yours off too Por favor. and now i will all righty should we go with the first question sure super so um patrick do you have thoughts about how you might continually advocate for the core educational and equity values of the Medfield Public Schools in the context of a building project? Yes, um, I think through every step of the project that I, if I were to enter in on um, from start to finish, I'd be seeing it through the eyes of an educator. Um, my educational experience as a teacher, I was mostly a fourth grade teacher. That was kind of my sweet spot. Love that age group. I taught also second and subbed around um, two through five as well. And I have, you know, I think a unique perspective on school buildings. Uh, having worked in a number of them, I can see how the building can be conducive to learning, can be conducive to the faculty uh, carrying out their jobs and doing what they do, um, can be conducive to students um, you know, collaborating with one another. And I've seen how buildings can work to further education and I've seen how they can inhibit education. And the first building I ever worked in was every classroom was identical. The hallways were you know, just as you picture them with a tile and they were loud. And kids from my class who received special education services um, were often down in the basement in you know, what were utility closets and it was always a fight for space. At the same time, I had experience uh, there you know, with a small classroom. And one of the things that I like to do was break out into small groups and do stations. And from what I've seen with the school building vision so far, it seems like, I would imagine it's the educators have pushed for these breakout spaces outside the classroom. Um, I think it's important to have these learning spaces that are going to meet the current direction of education, which is, you know, pushing for more collaboration, more uh, partnerships, more, you know, small group instruction. Um, you know, there's really a, a push towards response to intervention and really making sure that kids are being tracked and assessed properly. And to do that, you need the space. And um, like I said before, with special education, you know, there's kids with a diverse range of needs who need proper settings to be educated to, whether it's OT, whether it's having a room where there's some privacy and the person giving instruction and receiving instruction can hear each other clearly. And I know that, you know, I've seen some new newer schools and the designs are really exciting. And I think the direction that schools are going in is really great. And I 
personally would advocate for equity um, for students by making sure that, you know, again, every step of the way, we are considering the needs of all children. Um, and, you know, I know that educators are going to play an important part in this because, you know, it's, it's going to be their classrooms and this, you know, it's going to be the community school and it's going to be the community's building. And there's going to be a lot of input from all over. Um, I'll wrap it up there because I think I've passed three minutes. Yeah, now. that's perfect. Thank you so much. So um, can you talk about your experience professionally and as a volunteer that makes you a strong candidate sure. for the SBC committee? Okay. Um, so after I finished my undergraduate degree, I jumped into the live sound and then audiovisual industry. And uh, I worked for a few years as an AV installer in New York City, uh, mostly in Manhattan. And that, you know, that could take me one day to the Upper West Side working at Mount Sinai. It could take me down to NYU. And I worked in universities and hospitals, office buildings. Um, and I have, you know, I had experience working, seeing projects from start to finish. Uh, working with as a technician with project managers with other trades, you know, technically I was like a low voltage electrician, so I would work with electricians. We would pull cable, um, or I'd supervise, or I would pull cable, terminate cable, set up, you know, sound systems, PA systems, intercom systems, and my big specialty was smart boards, which you know uh, we installed a lot of them in classrooms. And when I became an educator, which is a career change for me to going from AV to uh, elementary education, which is had something I always considered uh, doing. And um, in my interview with my future vice uh, principal and, and principal, and my vice principal kind of said, I think you you made a mistake telling me that you know how to install and serve a smart <laughs> because everybody's going to be bugging you. And it was actually the other way around. I'd walk into a classroom, I'd see a smart board that wasn't calibrated. And next thing you know, it's me and the custodian Jeff taking off the mount. And they were all installed incorrectly across the building. Some were easier to fix than others, and some weren't. Um, so that, I feel like I have this connection there. There are two very different experiences. And, you know, I'm also a quick study, you know, I do a lot of DIY work too. So it's, it's my father was an Eagle Scout and a handy, very handy person. So it, I grew up being comfortable around tools, construction, and the idea of being involved in a school building project and kind of at any level is really intriguing to me. So it sounds like you're you would be familiar with what's involved in the outfitting of the classroom with different technologies or cable in the classroom. Yeah. And I, you know, I used to look at floor plans and would, you know, I can again quick study, but I know how to read a basic floor plan and see like, oh, here's where the speakers are going, here's where the electric is, here's where the IT is. Um, and kind of see it from that perspective, almost like through the walls and through the ceiling. Well, well, see that it's missing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I which often happens. Yeah. yeah. It has happened. I can't say it ever <laughs> happened in my new experience. <laughs> Super. Just, you know, what you're taking away through is just on the other side, there's any work around the town. There's a volunteer. Oh, yeah. The volunteers and bring the Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, I, I'm on the programming committee with Bell Forge Art Center in town. Um, and that's only more recently. I've been volunteering basically since I got here with them. Um, and uh, from about 12 to 25, I was one week out of the year, I would volunteer with the Philadelphia Folk Festival um, on the camping committee. And kind of by the time I stopped going to the festival and, and uh, you know volunteering with them, I was like a group chief supervisor. Um, so I had that kind of supervisor role then until in, into my 20s. And, uh, uh, but mostly just, you know, from the time I was an educator till now, um, 
it's mostly just working and uh, uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah, I'm currently uh, a stay at home dad, if you would call it that, uh, no with my two, yeah, full time caretaker or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> two year old and four year old who uh, both just started preschool for the first time. It's great. Tim, you missed it. He just moved to town in March. Okay, cool. But yeah, so he's really cramming it in. <laughs> Super. So um, the last question is, can you share an experience where you have worked with um, a committee, a subcommittee that may have had lots of divided opinions and where have you taken an active role in driving consensus? Um, so uh, I would say, you know, in my education experience and work experience, I served on um, you know, like grade level teams and different uh, groups within the school, um, you know, whether it was in the Lower East Side or um, in Dover, Vermont. And it was uh, at, towards the end of my experience in Dover, Vermont, that I was asked by the supervisory union to uh, be a part of the hiring committee for, um, it was a committee put together to hire um, some new folks to, basically be intervention specialists who would go around from school to school within the supervisor union, which was sometimes across the mountain um, to the other schools, and who was going to be going into schools and acting as a consultant for teachers and really someone who would be able to um, you know, work with teachers. Um, but the thing was, they would be replacing a number of people who were going to be laid off because the state had suggested it was the state's recommendation that they put um, that they needed more qualified teachers to take on these roles as you know they because you have people who were um, providing special education services or interventions who weren't necessarily qualified on paper and so there was a lot of people who were going to be losing their jobs who even though they weren't qualified on paper with the master's degree or the certifications, um, who would, you know, were pillars of their community. And I'm, at my school in particular, there's somebody who worked there for 30 years, who had gone to that school, was known by everyone in town, and um, she no longer qualified for the job. And so going into it, it was already contentious. There was we knew the hiring committee knew that it was going to be um, this person was not only going to have to meet all the job requirements as an educator, but they were also going to need to be able to handle the stress of going from school to school and not always being welcome at first, but somebody who's also going to be able to push through that and work with teachers ultimately and, and do well in that position. Um, so we took everybody on that committee, I can say, took a very um, took it very seriously and we didn't always agree on candidates at times and I know that you know there were times where I I couldn't understand why somebody was going one way or another with a candidate and I tried to always make sure that you know I was listening that I was asking questions I didn't understand why they why they weren't favoring a candidate or something I'd wanted to to make sure that I was hearing everyone out, that we were exploring different scenarios. And in the end, we, you know, my before I, I ended up leaving Vermont and right, resigning from the committee when my wife took a job in Boston, um, I we we ended up finding one candidate and it was a consensus and we operated, I can say that it throughout the whole hiring process of the interview, a dozen different candidates. It was always, in some cases, we reached a consensus and the person turned us down. And but it was always a consensus on whether or not we wanted to go with that candidate or explore further or get another interview. And and that was something you know, just to be a little more specific. But you know, there was one instance where we couldn't agree on a candidate whether or not some people were in favor, some people weren't in hiring them. And so we came to the consensus to just have another interview and, and bring them back for a second time and kind of explore the areas of concern. And um, yeah, I, I just know that I would bring that to the table. I, I'm pretty 
easy to work with. I have opinions, but I'm not opinionated, and I think I can bring a lot to this, given the chance. Super. Thank you. Um, so did you want to have a closing statement or share anything you haven't already shared? Um, I would just say that, uh, you know, though I am very new to Medfield, I have already developed a deep love for the place. It is my home. It's taken me a long while to settle somewhere and, and say this is my home. It is. And I, you know, I plan on sending my kids through the public schools and I could not be, I'm, my son is actually already involved in the public schools. Um, and so I've already gotten, you know, a look into uh, what it's like here. And I'm, I'm just really excited for that. And I want to say that I am invested in this town. I'm invested in this new school project. And given the chance to work with you, I would give it my all. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having yeah. me very much. Yeah. Yeah, really nice to meet you too. Yeah, nice to meet you. Meeting a lot more of you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. And I think one of the things that we said in our, our kind of previous meetings, we were talking about kind of interviewing people, is that uh, a building committee, and we'll say this to all the candidates, a building committee has like the building committee, and then there's so often so many kind of support, community outreach, and kind of um, subcommittees and things that, yeah. that need to be populated by people who also have a level of experience and knowledge that, you know, can really help move the, the project forward. So mm -hmm. it's really nice to get a, a really good view of what your experience is up to this point. You just, your willingness to kind of be in here. Yeah, I'm communicating the things that you pointed out that are important in school building. You know, mm -hmm. those are things that people who have, don't work in schools don't really understand. And, and kind of having dedicated spaces that are required. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What you described about the basement is what that street is today. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know. I mean, you know, <laughs> anybody who has a kid has yeah. uh, and, and being special needs yeah. knows that that yeah. it's very hard to advocate for the spaces simply because it seems like it must, you know, like kind of uh, have a small, you know, kind of yeah. population in YMG. But indeed, it's not because every time you have a kid who has interventions, um, you're actually bringing those to the rest of the classroom. And, enriching yeah. the rest of the classroom exactly so yeah and that's those are things that really need to be integrated yeah in large absolutely the group you worked with in the new york is that teq oh no it's uh rts okay. yeah well super patrick thank you thank so you. much Thanks for your for time me. your interest and i'm so impressed that you've just moved to town in march so right on yes yeah. you yes and and I'll also <laughs> start practicing no <laughs> 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 no, this is great. This says a lot. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Be well. All righty. So our next meeting, I figure um, on December the 1st, we'll have those three other interviews and afterwards we will deliberate and mm -hmm. choose our candidates. Sorry. Really hard. Yeah, no, exactly. So this we're off to a great start. I feel good about this. This is great. And um, so do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. All righty. Adjourn Thanks. till the first. Adjourn first. Alas, at seven here as well. Seven here. Yeah. Thank you.